both like talkers and excitable people and like extroverts who have been like following each other for so long. Yeah. So we're both like, Rah! We're, <laughs> we're meeting! <laughs> Hello and welcome to my messy Seattle hotel room. We're not gonna be here for long. I am just finishing off getting ready and I am heading out in just a few minutes here to go meet somebody very special, actually three very special people. No, two very special people, one very special dog, but I consider dogs to be basically humans, particularly guide dogs, so let's just say three very special humans. I am going to go meet a blind artist named Paul Castle. He happens to also have red nitus pupintosa, my RP fam, first RPer to feature in the new series, Blind Leading the Blind, um, but today, I'm meeting with Paul Castle. He is a blind artist who has retinitis pigmentosa. I have been following him and his adorable husband, Matthew, for a long time now. I have been so excited seeing their content grow, seeing their following and their platform grow, seeing them get brand deals. Like I am just so freaking excited for these two. They are the sweetest, cutest couple. And every time I watch them, I'm like, oh my God, best friend vibes through the screen. Okay, so Paul and I have been DMing. We went from the DMs to the texting for like over a year now, I wanna say. And I just, I'm so excited to meet him in person finally um, and have our like virtual bestie relationship come to reality. I'm manifesting it. He might not be, but I'm manifesting this. Um, and he also has a guide dog named Mr. Maples. I mean, the dog's name is Maple, but we call him Mr. Maples around here um, in the Paul Matthew fandom and Elton and Mr. Maples are gonna get to meet. So it's gonna be very cute. We got some dog content. We got some art. We're going to an art gallery. Like Paul has planned a flawless artsy day for us here in Seattle. So let's go get to it. Hello, hello. Oh good, I got the right door. <laughs> I was like, I really hope I got the right one. Hi, Hi. Hi. Come on in, come on in. After I met Paul and Matthew, it was time for our adorable dogs to meet, of course, and for us to bond over all the doggy things, and it absolutely did get chaotic at times. Okay, Maple, okay, are you ready? I'm gonna let Mr. Maple's Yeah, wait, let me put the this, harness down. Mr. Maple's behind this door. This is perfect. Maple, look at here! Whoa! <laughs> like a rocket! <laughs> like a rocket! Look who is! Look who it is! Yes, say hello! Golden Lab a lot, because Guide Dogs for the Blind does crosses, and he he just has the coloring and a lot of the features. So, he knows, she's like, very he's another guide dog. I swear, he only likes other guide dogs, Molly. Anytime he needs a regular dog, he's like, no. I always joke that like, when dogs walk by, when we walk by dogs and they're like barking at Elton, he like doesn't even turn his head. He's like, I can't talk to you. Like, <laughs> you're so unkind. Yes. Because of my light detecting is still fairly good inside my uh, my, my pinpoint vision. Yeah. I requested a, a yellow. Yes, so you that can see I it can better. see it better, you know, in dark because Elton's right there. I cannot see Elton. I don't yeah. know where he I can hear the bone. I mean I can feel the floof. But there's no, like, he kind of disappears from, from me. When I got my yeah. first guide dog, Gypsy, she was all black and white, yeah. and I could still see high color contrast, so it was okay. perfect. Yes. Because I could, like, easily find oh, her, yeah. and I always knew where her face was, because, like, her nose was bright white, oh, and she had a white stripe on her so face. Cool. And then her paws, her legs were black with white paws. Okay. So I could always see where the ends of her legs were. I love that. It was, like, perfect. It was so <laughs> ideal. Was, That's like, actually the most ideal, because maple will disappear on, like, a white carpet. Yeah. You know, like, if we're in a bright space, I'm like, dang it, this is this what is I need. This is what a black dog would be I need two guys on. Oh, <laughs> I have a visitor. You I have do. a, oh my God. Isn't he cute? I seriously thought maple was soft. Now, if you go from this to maple, it is the roughest <laughs> sandpaper <laughs> experience. And then we obviously had to gush over how much we love each other for a minute or two. I am so excited to do this with you because I've been following you for a long time. My mom's the one who found you. Okay. And uh, I've been following you for a long time and every time I see your guys' content, I'm like, I just want to be their best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to third wheel them all the time. <laughs> or fourth wheel, I guess. I'd be the fourth wheel to Mr. Maple. Yeah, so well, yeah. and Elton John has to be part of it. Yeah, he's, he's the wheel six. Can I? We're can... making a whole minivan. Okay. Well, actually, do you know what one of the funniest comments I ever got was? Yeah, well. It was like near the beginning of my channel. Um, like there's still ignorance, but back then it was like 
wild, you yeah. know, like, because oh, there's just, sure. like, content about blindness or disability, like, didn't exist, basically, when I started, yeah. you know, so yeah. it's just, like, the first time people were seeing, like, disabled people make content, yes. which is so funny to yes. think now, because now, thankfully, it, the community's thriving. It's thriving. But... Because of you, because you oh. paved the way, you were the pioneer. Thank you. Oh, in so many ways, I, I mean, that's obvious to everybody. I wouldn't have even had the thought to do it were it not for you oh, doing it first. You're thank like, you. And after that, I can tell you, we just went on all sorts of silly tangents and had way too much fun together. Seriously, the first cut of this video was an hour and a half long. And that's why I decided to split it into two parts. So this is part one where we're going to go over Paul's vision loss, his diagnosis, and his art career. And then in part two, he'll actually teach me how to paint. Here's just a little taster of what you can expect from that video. Oh, you're straight in there. Yeah, like, yeah this one feels like feel. a makeup brush. <laughs> is that I'm, a makeup brush? No, it is not. It's actually a watercolor brush. Yeah. <laughs> Like literally feels like <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly the same. And oil you just for being blind, I just tried to put the brush back in, and I just like put it beside. The <laughs> I do that all the time. And we even went to an accessible multi-sensory art gallery, which you know, I love those kind of things. So there is lots to look forward to in part two, so make sure you come back next week for that and you've got your notifications turned on. But I also actually ended up editing together a third version, which will be exclusive to my Patreon. So if you want to see the extended video with all the extra clips that I cut out of this one of us just being goofy and silly and laughing and having all this fun, fun blind moments together, then check out patreon.com slash Molly Burke for that exclusive content and so many more perks over there. I just don't like. Yeah. You could be brothers. We could be twins. Yes. Molly and Polly. The are <laughs> Separated at birth. Really what color oh, hair yeah, you have? It's similar. like ashy brown, blondy, black. Yes. It was blonde when I was a toehead when I was a kid. Totally blonde. And then, of course, it slowly darkened. And now, I think. That was just the most blind answer. What color is your hair? Ashy blonde, blonde, brown, dark. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> names every hair color. I'm like, so you don't know. <laughs> But once we got our fun and giggles out, we finally got down to talking about Paul's diagnosis and vision loss. And I don't know if this was your experience growing up before diagnosis, and I don't know when exactly you were diagnosed, but I wasn't diagnosed until I was 16 years old. So oh, the, wow. Yes. So the first 16 years of my life, I was just labeled as super clumsy. The mm. klutz, Paul the klutz. I have so many scars, bumps, and bruises, so many trips to the hospital, and I just thought, I am doomed. Like... And nobody figured it out, Molly, until I got behind the wheel of a car. <laughs> and thank God that that wow. was the tipping point. Yeah. You're like, I think he can't see that stop sign. Yeah, yeah. Or the car we're merging into right now. Paul, stop! <laughs> <laughs> that was essentially They're like, God, he's not just clumsy, he's a terrible driver. <laughs> he's a terrible driver. He must be gay. <laughs> no, I had to come out as gay and then I had to come out as blind. blind. Yeah. Oh, that's You're like, gay that's wasn't lot. enough. I decided to become a double threat. Yeah. Yes. Like everything right now at the stage of my vision loss, it's everything has to be bright and white. Like even the apartment you're sitting in. Matthew looked at so many apartments. He's like, it has to be a corner unit. because we. It has to be oh, south right. facing. South yes, facing south corner facing unit. Is <laughs> Who else cares about the south All facing? All of mine are south facing units. <laughs> Yes. Everything in my life. Yes. Oh my god, I'm so glad you, you can relate. You get it. We're Southwest. Yes. Southwest, Southwest is like the dream. That's the dream. Yeah. <laughs> so what can you see now? Yeah, so uh, this is a question we get asked so often and we've actually been doing like some some simulations, simulations for it's people. It's so hard to simulate. It is and so it's hard. so hard to describe. Yes. Even like one blind person to another, we see so differently. Oh, we really do. That it's like, I can like, I can obviously conceptualize what you see better mm. than like a non, like mm. a fully sighted person could. Yeah. But even me, we're like, we have the same disease and yeah. we will never see the world the same way. No. What can I see? Yes, what can you see now? By the way, do I have ADD or am I just blind? Because I think blind people and ADD, there's a lot of commonalities. Well, we, also, we, we're both like talkers and excitable people and like extroverts <laughs> who've been like following each other for so long. Yeah. So we're both like, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're meeting. <laughs> if one of us doesn't hit, the first one to hit the other in the face. With five points. I'm like constantly, yes. <laughs> Whoever hits you first buys dinner. <laughs> five points for Hufflepuff. All right, so I, I have 
uh, you know, a tiny little, Matthew calls it, I love this description, a keyhole of vision. Mm. It's, so it's at the very, very center of my eye. Uh, I do have that little keyhole. I, I like to say that it's a little blurry because I do actually wear contact lenses because it improves because my lens is so distorted. But of course, retinitis pigmentosa is the, the retina of the eye. So, but I do wear contacts to improve that little keyhole of vision just a little. We can't, of course, improve it a lot, but yeah. every little bit helps. And so I, it's a little blurry through there, but enough that I can still do art. And it's a little dim because the light detecting is bad. Right. Everywhere else in my vision, the full spectrum of vision around that little little uh, pinhole, keyhole, I call it like looking through a straw, right? yeah. is a static. I just call it static. I mm. always, as a, as a TV lover as a kid, would, would compare it to static on a television screen. Did you ever see like when you were a kid? Yeah, 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 the, yeah. The, yeah. That, that, You'd that go to the motion. channel, it's just like, And it's all... All like speckly. Speckly. Yeah. So depending on the room I'm in, my brain is like borrowing colors from that room. This is a bright room, so the static is almost a lot more like fireworks. And sometimes it's like neon green and purple, but they're like exploding in front of my eyes. So do you have Charles Benet syndrome? I've never heard of Charles Benet syndrome. So Charles Benet syndrome happens to people who have typically retinal diseases, yeah. um, like retinitis pigmentosa, macular degeneration, star guards, things like that, um, who experience significant vision loss in a short period of time okay. and it causes you to have visual hallucinations oh. so for some people they're actually seeing like a man on a horse and carriage in their living room oh wow like they're literally seeing full scenes but for a lot of people including myself what you see is like flashing lights and colors yes. neon signs yes yeah oh wow so you have charles Benet syndrome <laughs> molly bird just diagnosed Diagnosing me you. with charles Benet syndrome <laughs> Now you know. The more this you is know. This insane. There I mean, I have never even heard of that. I thought this was just a common part of RP. Well, so not everybody with RP has it yeah. because it, it only happens if you lose a lot of vision in a short span. Oh, so wow. if you had like a significant drop in vision. Yeah. Um, so I started seeing it when I was eight years old. Okay. And like the doctors told my parents that it was totally normal, but like yeah. didn't give a name on it. Okay. Which I find like having a proper diagnosis, like a word empowering. Yes. Like I'm oh. like, oh, okay, it's there's like a, a real thing and there's other people with this real thing. Amali, the day I was told that I had retinitis pigmentosa, and by the way, that word had never entered my ears before that day. We had no clue what it was, even though it's genetic. Nobody had yeah, it in my family. Me too. Okay, same thing. I, my dad turned to me, because I was sort of just like, oh, okay. And he, I was like not having the response he thought I should have. Yeah, I said, like, do you yeah. understand? There's no treatment, you're going blind. And it was in my mind, and I only realized later, it was a it was a relief to know that it had a name. That there was a reason. And there was a reason. You weren't it just wasn't clumsy me. Paul. Yes. Yes. Exactly. You weren't just clumsy Paul. There was like a reason. The community and not feeling alone for the first time is so important. I went to my first group meeting of blind people at the Lighthouse for the Blind in San Francisco, where I went to college. And I actually was able to process my emotions for the first time. Mm. And it was three years after my diagnosis and I broke down crying. When it, I was all ready to give my like cheerful speech, my usual rose tinted, all, yeah. you know, being Paul that I'd been expected to be all the time, which was super positive. And I'm starting to talk in my throat, my, 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 my voice caught in my throat. Mm. And I just, I couldn't talk anymore and I started to cry and everybody just came around me and hugged me. Because for the first time, yes. you were in a room of people who, like, actually understood. Exactly. So you didn't have to be, like, the strong, positive person anymore. You could, like, talk to people on a level where they actually know what you're going 100%. through. 100%. Yeah. So, yeah. So, back to what you were saying. That's my, that is where my vision, uh, that's how I describe it. And now I've just discovered I have something. Charles something. Benet Syndrome. Charles Benet Syndrome. Sounds like Yeah, Benier. so it's for you, it's like, flashing lights. Yes, it's flashing lights. Yeah, so I see blue, green, and purple flashing lights okay, all the time. Really? In like my central everywhere. In the central too. Everywhere. Oh my goodness, yeah. yeah, ever since everywhere. I was eight. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then it's the is color color I'm sure is distorted for you. Oh yeah, I'm colorblind, yeah. so yeah. it's super like yeah. I I have used. Is it like very faded and everything blends together? So interestingly for me, I can tell between warm and cool colors, mm -hmm. but see, I can't I can identify what that is. Yes. Okay. I can tell like when when a light because yeah. I have light perception. I can tell if a light is warm toned or cool toned, okay. but I can't tell you what color it is. Okay. I can only tell you if it's warm or cool. Yes. So for you, with since we both have the Charles Benet syndrome, excuse me while I got excited Look about at you, my new, new diagnosis. <laughs> so empowering. Talk to your doctor about I it. Know, I know. <laughs> you aren't a doctor, <laughs> Molly. 
<laughs> Dr. Molly. This <laughs> time. <PhD. laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I absolutely am going to bring that up. But so I'm trying to imagine, well, I can imagine now what you see because we, I have that in my visual field, but now I'm imagining it over my central vision. Yes. And mine was, even when I could see really well, I still yeah. had it in my central vision. Okay. So I would have to like look through it. Sure. So it was a little bit transparent at the time? Or it's like, like there's gaps little, in between. Right. Them. So course. it's like I would be like seeing through the gaps yes. of flashing lights. Because it's not every, I get that. Because for me, it almost feels like your own... Well, for me, I feel like it's your brain trying to fill in what's not there. That's exactly what it is. Exactly so basically what, what your brain does is yeah. it's like, oh, I can't see anymore. Mm -hmm. I should reroute myself so I can see. Yeah. And so it like creates yes. these visual little images that aren't actually Do you there. get the hallucinations that you were I don't about? see like, like a horse. horses or <laughs> waterfalls. That's or I Yeah, right? <laughs> cool show. I just see fireworks, like 24-7 yeah. fireworks. Yeah. And is it like a fast, almost a fast vibration? Mine are vibrating very quickly. Constantly moving. Yeah, yeah. They're like um, squiggles, squiggles and stars and, and worms. And yes, and yes, 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 yes. Okay, See, isn't it fun when you find people who get it? <laughs> yes. And then we finally got down to the reason we're really all here, which is talking about Paul's journey as a working visual artist while living with vision loss. I've been a passionate artist for as long as I can remember from when I was six years old. Of course, like every kid, we're always drawing, right? Everybody's mm -hmm. got the crayons Dreaming. and the doodles yeah, yeah. and everything. But I immediately knew at that age that I wanted to tell stories through my art. Specifically, I, wa I wanted to create a book. So I made my first book. I stole my brother's copy of G.I. Joe's in Outer Space. I ripped out all the pages because I knew I needed a hardcover for my book. And I taped in, he didn't want the book anymore, by the way. <laughs> I taped in my own story uh, into the hardcover and Aww. told my first story called The Sad Turtle, about a, sad, a little turtle with no friends, who then goes on a journey to make friends. Uh, and I did this one weekend and my parents discovered it, and of course they kept it for me, and it's actually up on my bookshelf. I still have it. You should, you should rewrite it. I want like, to. re-release it. I want to do like the updated version of it. But from that time in my life, and I fell in love with Disney movies, of course, and Disney animation, and I just fell in love with visual storytelling. And I've heard you say before on your channel that you are a highly visual person. Yes. I am a highly visual person. Every, Twins. It's yeah. such a weird thing to be like, <laughs> Molly. Yeah. Yeah. Molly and Polly are at it again. I am it's like, so annoying being so highly visual and being oh, blind. It and it feels like a cruel joke. It's 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 so frustrating. It's ironic. Because and I, I mean I have plenty of blind friends who aren't like that. Like yeah. they don't care what yeah. everything looks like. Yeah. I wanna know what everything looks like and everything yeah. at all times must be aesthetically yeah. pleasing. Do I don't care that yes, it must be I don't care that it must it. be aesthetically pleasing. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And and I've actually had ophthalmologists and people in the profession sort of quizzically raise their eyebrows if I sort of appear to be really concerned with how something looks. They're almost saying like, why should you care? And it's like heartbreaking because I'm like, just because I can't see it doesn't mean I can't see it in my mind. Mm -hmm. My mind is a very powerful tool and it's, I have a very vivid imagination and I can visualize things in my brain and I need, so I, I love very detailed descriptions of things. Matthew's so good. Whenever we go on a walk, he, I like to, him to read out every sign to me. It's I like, like constant audio description. Yes. Yeah, I want, like I say, I want an audio description track for life. Yeah. Like I literally <laughs> just want AD for yeah, everything. For everything. And because I like to picture it in my mind. And like, I don't know if you have the same thing you picture. I can't really create like pictures. Okay, I can't yeah. really visualize things. Yeah. Um, but... I don't know how to describe it. It's like I can't come yeah. up with a visual image, mm -hmm. but I feel it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's like no, I, I totally get that. Yeah, I feel it. You feel it, and it's satisfying mm -hmm. to know those details. Yes. And it's happening through our ability to communicate, right? Good, strong communicator. Uh, uh, so having the words to understand something is so satisfying. I can totally 100% get that. And, you know, because my, my vision loss is progressive, there's a chance a good chance even that i will lose that little pinhole of vision i do have yeah my biggest fear is what you just said is yeah. not being able to picture it in my head anymore not being able to picture matthew's smile you know not being able to but I, it's so healing to hear you say what you just said that it still means a lot to you that it's satisfying and that it feels good that you can feel it oh that's so good 
I mean, the good news is not all people who lose their vision lose their visual memory. Right. I thought they did. Okay. But I've since met many people like me who don't ma maintain the visual memory, but I've met mm -hmm. just as many who have vivid visual memories, yeah, which yeah. is mind-blowing for me and hard for me to imagine because yeah. when I close my eyes and I think really hard about a visual thing, all I see is blue, green, and purple flashing lights. Yeah. Like, I don't. Yeah. That's, that's just what I see. I, yeah. That's what I picture. That's it. I can't like see past that to mm -hmm. create a visual memory. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that you won't be able to. Right. So anyway, so the vision loss, it, I, I'm diagnosed at 16. At this point, Molly, not only do I want to, I know I want to be a visual storyteller. It's not just art. It's not just books. And, it's movies. I had a video camera and I'm making movies with all my childhood friends. I'm known as like the little Steven Spielberg at my high school where I'm like, writing screenplays and casting people in them. And I'm not diagnosed yet. I'm, but like, I'm noticing at night when we do night shoots or whatever, like I have to get somebody else to film or I trip over things or like, mm -hmm. I'm not fully seen. But something I did discover is I could see better through the little screen in the camera because it's small and it brightens. And it's bright. So mm -hmm. I could do more filming just by staring down at this little bright screen rather than if I was actually looking at the scene with my yeah. Eyes. It's funny, I used to do this thing sometimes in the car where, it, you know those magnifying mirrors? Yes. I would like flash it out the window of the car and then I could see what was out the window <gasps> really? by looking at the mirror. Oh wow. <laughs> see the clever little yeah. things that we do to adapt? So I wanted to be a filmmaker, I wanted to tell stories and I was still passionate about animation and everything else and then I get the diagnosis. And I was like, well, how is this going to affect my future dreams? I wanted to move to Hollywood. I was going to move to L.A. at the age of 18, go to film school, hit, become a director, do the whole thing. So that totally changed the trajectory of my life. I sometimes wish I had just been like, you know what? I'm going to Hollywood anyway. Just try to hold me back. But by the time I turned 18, I had had so many little accidents. Mm -hmm. Were you, you weren't using a cane yet. I wasn't yet. using a cane yet. Stubborn as we often are. Yes, that's our key people. <laughs> yes, I was never. So I was, I had so many bumps, bruises, accidents that I was like terrified of the idea of going from my small Canadian, rural Canadian town to the big Los Angeles to conquer my filmmaking dreams and I was like, I can't do it. So I ended up going to college uh, actually in California in the Bay Area where my dad lived and I studied English literature instead because I said my passion is storytelling. At the core of everything I love, it's telling stories. Mm -hmm. And so I want to understand literature, I want to be a creative writer, and in my spare time I continued with art because you cannot squash a dream. And as my site was going, I'm painting every day after class, I'm painting and I was getting my art set up in coffee shops Aww. and, you know, those, one of those little yeah. things and doing little little gigs. I got in, a, my, what, in a little restaurants, one of my first restaurants I ever got my, my paintings hung in was, was a little seafood restaurant in Vancouver, actually. Aww. and. I had to climb, they were changing the grease trap the day I was loading my, my paintings in and I had to go in through the back and step over a giant grease trap oh no. with my paintings Ooh. blind <laughs> and I, it was so yeah. precarious. I had a friend helping me and nothing got damaged and I didn't get hurt, but it was close <laughs> and it stunk in there. But I I'm sold like imagine. four paintings and I was like, oh my God, I could actually You're do like, this. You're like, I'm an artist. I'm an artist. I'm a real artist. And so I just continued that ever since. And when I graduated from college, I just continued painting. And I continued getting my, my work um, in coffee shops and eventually in some galleries, some little local galleries. And then, of course, social media and then broadcasting that uh, initially just Facebook. Then I was starting to get commissions and all kinds of things like that site is continuing to go and so I have to change and adapt as I go. My style changed, mm -hmm. how I painted changed, my environment changed. I'm like, I need more light. I was getting these huge floodlights in my studio pointed down at the canvas and I would work in this tiny little space. So I, I've described the little uh, keyhole of vision. I'm just... Do you I'm, have that in both eyes? I do. And it's e about equal? Yeah-ish. I actually have a little, uh, uh, a map, like a mapping that they did of it mm -hmm. that shows. It's, a, it's pretty equal. It's tiny, but it's the same. So yeah. it's... So my I, right eye was always like a lot worse than my left. Well, my left eye is actually the worst eye. Uh, it, I don't know how much worse, but it's my worst. Continued as the sight loss progressed, and eventually I discovered uh, the iPad to, because I had to um, give up traditional painting because it just because of that vision because of those 
dying cells, even in that little central vision, the, those fireworks, they, they start and they still do, uh, obviously, encroach on the central vision. They kind of sputter and burst in there and they can be a little confusing to me. And so while I'm doing really detailed artwork, I have to like shut my eyes and just shake my head and walk yeah, like away, refocus, refocus like, yeah. to kind of get in there again. And, and do you get a lot of eye fatigue and stuff? Totally. Eye pain, yeah. eye fatigue. So I, I'm fortunate not to get too much pain. That's good. Uh, so it feels like it's strain, I would mm -hmm. call it. Like mm -hmm. a strain, like an ache, a little bit. You know, then I just know that, okay, I need to rest my eyes. I have to stop. Yeah. You know? Yeah, sometimes I'll get it where it feels like there's like something in the back of my head trying to pop my eyes out. Like yeah. It's like this intense pressure on oh, the backs wow. of both my eyes. Wow, yeah, like I even just had it last night, really? just because I had like a long travel day. Oh and all yeah. of a sudden I'm just like, oh my god, my eyes are hurting so much. Okay, I'm very fortunate. I don't get that level of pain. I would I would describe mine as more of the fatigue right yeah. now, the strain. So uh, the reason I started to use the iPad is because, and it's incredible that the technology sort of happened in parallel with my vision mm. loss. I had to hang up my brushes because I just got too difficult. The eye strain was too difficult. The, 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 the lack of, I couldn't get the canvas to be bright enough for right. my eyes. And so the cool thing about the iPad is it illuminates from within. I right. can fully brighten it, max brightness. And for SRP people, light is the best thing. It is the key, it's a life. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you kind of like, first of all, I'm, something that I'm not sure that you could, let me pull up a new canvas. Is, Can I feel it? Oh yeah, so I so want you to feel it because it actually has a cover on it that is paper-like. So here's the pencil. I'm gonna give you. Are you left-handed oh, or right-handed? I'm left-handed. Oh, you are? Just like Matthew. Okay. Um, oh, that's your left. -handed. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> continues to hand it to my right hand. Your left hand. Now we have to make it hard for you. Okay. <laughs> now you can't see, and you have to do it with your non-dominant hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. So funny. Okay, so um, if you can feel, so this is sitting in like a foam case. Yeah, it's really like, comfy. It's nice if I drop it and it's, it like, props up on my lap a little easier. Um, if that's... you feel up in this corner, see these these little divots? So that's yeah. like the power button. Oh, the, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And like different, like that. And then over here, right here, is where I, I can plug it in. It. Exactly. This is a really cool case. Yeah, I love that thing. And so you have a, a canvas in front of you. Um, if you just take the pencil and just, I can, what, what color should we pick? What color pink. do you want? You want pink, of Hot course. Pink. Hot pink. Oh my goodness. I don't, well, I'm colorblind, so is this, <laughs> Matthew, where's the pink? We're gonna go, I think this is in that, is that pink? Okay, let's see. Is it pink? Let's go. Oh yeah, I think so. Is that pink? Anybody? One of the sighted people? Somebody speak, sighted people in the room. You're not, you're sighted, it's, sure, but. It looks orange to me. It's a beautiful orange. It is, pink. oh. It's oh, a coral. Orange, orange, orange pink. pink. Coral. There you go. Orange. Let's go pinker. Okay, let's try that. I think this is pink. Is this pink? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well done! <laughs> Yay! Okay, so um, I take it you cannot see anything on this screen, even with the brightness turned No. Out. And there's no contrast. If it was like, um, Say like half of it was white and half of it was black. I would oh, be able to tell like that the one half was brighter. Than okay, the other. so if I change your tool to black, would you be able to? I like, might be able to to tell where that was happening. To tell where if if I like like the yeah. the contrast. So I can tell that like this part of the screen is darker now. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Okay, that's that's. Can you make it blacker. My accessibility features are mostly. Um, like in, uh, high contrast, uh, in everything has to be inverted. Oh, that's like a smaller tool now. <laughs> we gotta change the size of it, Molly. I'm creating a really beautiful. I one. know. I think you are, but I'm like the added challenge of doing this while it's facing you is fun. Okay, wait, wait. No, that's not what I want to do. How do I make this bigger? Oh, it's over here. Right, right. right. Okay, let's make that. So, huge. what do you okay. use? What do you use on your phone? Do you use Voiceover or Zoom? Whoa, oh, what that's did huge! I do? That's huge! What did I do? Uh... See, well, okay. now I can tell that there's yeah. only a little bit of light. Okay, now I just like I xed everything out again, so now you can see that's big. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Molly made a box. <gasps> cool. Art. <laughs> it's okay. an abstract eye. Okay, I, okay, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna make your tool a little smaller because I like what you're doing. I like where you're going. Maybe we can you know, go. What are you gonna do? So you can kind of tell where where the pen, where the dark is happening now, right? I could tell better, um, like if it's kind of like 
half of it's dark and half of it's light. Okay. But I can like. Would it be better if it was all black and you were painting in white? Oh, maybe. Okay, let's, let's try, that. try that. Let's try that. Okay, let me move the tool for a second. Is it better when it was all black and doing white? Or is it the same? Does it feel the same? This is better. Yeah. A little bit. But I think it would have to yeah, be like more just geometric shape or like, you know, like yeah. not line. Uh -huh. Because I just don't have enough like to see the line. Yeah. But I'm having fun anyway. <laughs> No, I, I do this on my, I have like one of the Samsung yeah. like pen and yeah. like draw on. I'll just, this is exactly what I do on there. I just like do doodles. Oh my goodness. Scribbly lines. Yeah. And it's very fun. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, Art. We're, we're saving. The, this is, I mean, hello. Oh, Hollywood original. I've, I've seen worse things at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. So this is. You wow. just have to say it's art. You just have to it say is. it's art. Do you want to sign it? Okay. okay. Let me, hold on. I'm going to position you. I'm going to shrink your tool a little bit. Okay. Just because we don't want the signature to be crazy big. I'll just... Right there. Yeah, I know. Ah! Sold to the highest bidder. <laughs> One dollar! <laughs> I can understand when you're losing your vision. Mm -hmm. Being like, I can't do this thing mm -hmm. that I used to be able to do anymore. Yeah. So I'm just not going to do it. Mm. Do you think... Yeah. You'll ever get to a point where you'll be like, no, I can't paint the way I used to paint. Right. But I can still make beautiful paintings. Yes. They're just not what they used to be. Right. Uh, that's such a great question. I feel for me, how do I put this? I know I could still do it, obviously. I could still do it. It would be a little different. I stopped enjoying the process. Yes. That was crucial. I stopped enjoying the process due to how things were changing and the kind of art I wanted to produce. Yeah. And I guess that's what I'm saying. Yes. Is you think like I think that's part of the yeah. maybe the grieving process and yeah. the you know just like that's a part of the vision loss journey. But do you think you'll ever get to a point I in do. your art career where you'll circle back around yes. and it won't it won't hurt right. to not be able to do it the way you yes. used to do it anymore. Yes. It'll you'll be able to have the fun again yes. instead of the pain <laughs> yeah. of not seeing it. Right. I think that if I hadn't discovered the iPad, which allowed me to continue doing detailed work, then I would have had to adapt it, it just as you said. But because this thing yeah. came out and I was like, oh, I can keep doing the stuff that I enjoy yes. doing at the level I like to do it while with my vision loss. Now, when that goes away, I'm 100% sure I will go back to painting and finding a new yeah. way of painting because I love the process yeah. of creating. And I like you're an artist through and through. You always have been. Yeah. You've found ways to adapt thus far. And I know that if... If and when you lose the ability to use the iPad or you lose the rest of your vision, like you're just going to adapt and pivot and find new ways to enjoy it. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. it was like in my episode of the series that I did with Ross, where it was yeah. like, you know, he was just gonna find a way to game even if the games aren't that accessible. Yeah. I'm gonna find a way to enjoy makeup and fashion yeah. even if I cannot do the makeup looks that I would that I know I would be capable of if I could see. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I can't put the outfits together that I know I could put together if I could see them. Mm -hmm. But like that, I love it so much that that doesn't matter. Yeah. And so I'm sure you'll be able to continually pivot and adapt and find new ways of doing art and mm -hmm. your art itself will evolve in its style. Yeah. Right. And it'll still be beautiful and unique and interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many types of art. And there's right? so many types of art and there's so many blind people that are creating incredible works of art. Yeah. And so I know that the spirit of creativity cannot be dampened exactly. by vision loss. Exactly. It, it, by any sort of uh, disability or, or obstacle. And this is this translates to every human being on the planet. You don't even have to have a classified disability. We all have challenges. Mm -hmm. We all have things that we need to overcome in order to pursue our dreams. You and I are living metaphors for you know, challenge obstacles will not hamper a, a, a dream or a passion of yours. There's always a possibility. There's always a way through. Yes. And I'm, I, I'm, you know, you and I are so similar as we've discovered today in so many ways. <laughs> Very similar. But you're, you, you are a makeup artist and a fashionista, and these are these are. Uh, very similar to being a painter like me and a visual, it's all visual storytelling. Yeah. You're telling stories through your makeup looks. Yeah. You're I'm telling, telling stories, stories about how fashion. I'm feeling and mm -hmm. how, you know, the self-expression. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. It's visual art. Mm -hmm. You are a visual artist. I am a visual artist. We are blind. And these things can be 
uh, one coexist. Of, coexist. Yeah. yeah, exactly. As you heard, Paul went from doing traditional painting to using an iPad as his vision declined. And I think that is the perfect example of how life-changing technology has been for our community and allowing us to continue to do the things we love, to be more independent. And I can tell you that Paul has done some incredible things with that iPad, including writing and illustrating his first book called The Pen Grooms. It is a children's book, but I've read it, I own it, I enjoy it, so I encourage all of you to check it out. It's so adorable. I will have the link to that and all of Paul and Matthew's links down below in the description box. So definitely go give them a follow, check them out, support them. And I think it's safe to say I made an amazing new friend, or actually three. Paul, Matthew, and Mr. Maple are all so wonderful. And we have more to come. Not only do we have part two of this video coming next week where I learned to paint and we went to the multi-sensory art museum, which I promise you don't want to miss out on, but also, we might have some more stuff planned coming up soon. I just think this is the beginning for Paul and I. Um, they're coming to LA to visit soon and we've got some fun stuff. So make sure you're following me, you're following them, so you're up to date on all the good stuff. And until next time, you can click over here to see me attempt to learn piano from a blind concert pianist or over here where I tried to play video games for the first time as a blind girl. Love you guys. Bye.